How do you help someone in need when you don't know what to do and you don't know what to say? I'm gonna share some of my experiences with you and why I continue to take a step of yes. In February of 2019, I was on my fourth trip to Haiti and I landed alone and I landed in the middle of political crisis. Now this is not unusual for Haiti, so I was not alarmed. I met my group and I continued with them to the school where we would be serving. I spent five profoundly inspiring days with Haitian students, their teachers, and these incredible American volunteers. But unfortunately, the political problems escalated and I made a decision to travel with a friend and a convoy of medical, uh, with medical um, volunteers back to Port-au-Prince. That journey took over 24 hours through roughly 20 roadblocks. Some were big and some were small. And it eventually ended with a brief but intense helicopter ride. But I witnessed incredible things, unforgettable things. The last roadblock was massive. And there were people everywhere. and We were waiting in our cars to see if we could continue. And I noticed a man on a motorcycle weaving inside of the crowd. And the barricades came up. These crowds parted, but they became still because they saw the large white coffin that he was balancing on the back of that motorcycle. Well, we were not allowed to pass, and so we turned the cars around, and I saw a man swinging a club. And he walked by my car, and he raised his hand, and he smiled at me and, and said hello. So I did the same, and I like to think that, that maybe he was letting me know that we, we, were, um, we were safe. This trip was an incredible experience for me. We had been through, um, we had gone off-road through these, these riverbeds. There were roadblocks where there were tires on fire on one side and kids were playing soccer on the other. But at that last roadblock, we were turned away and we were given safe sanctuary by a group of local Haitians. And the tables had turned a little bit. I was the person in need. I was a stranger and they took me in and I was hungry, they fed me. And when I boarded the helicopter the next day, even though they had been very gracious to us, I watched those impassive faces. And I was in the last group and, and I don't think I'll ever hear a helicopter again without thinking of this moment. I was gladly going home to my family, but I realized they were home and they would continue to live in this chaos. So this trip changed my life because I started to see what service truly meant. Now there's one question that I get a lot, especially when I returned from Haiti, was I afraid? Now there were moments of concern and there was moments of stress and alarm, but no, if I was afraid of anything, if I am afraid of anything, I'm afraid that I won't get a chance to go back. My friends in Haiti, they taught me a saying, dust in my eyes, now I can see. And there's a lot of dust in Haiti, that's for sure. But imagine if I wiped that dust from my eyes, I started to see clearly the incredible impact that these people were making to these communities. I realized in that moment that I still had to be a learner I had to learn a new way of helping before I could teach others. My professional journey started when I was 17 and I followed this crazy desire to learn French. I'm from South Georgia and I said yes to the opportunity to study French at Auburn. But I was 30 years old when I started learning Spanish and I am here today to tell you you're, it's never too late to learn a foreign language. But I want you to imagine me 30 years old with a four-year-old daughter, looking for a job, living with my parents. <laughs> and this opportunity to teach and learn Spanish at the same time came my way. You better believe I said yes. But I have to say it was because of my parents that I learned to be adventurous and I learned to make serving others a life priority. But it was in Haiti 
that I learned about my passion for elementary world language education. I had been traveling to Haiti for many years, and it was on that first trip many years before that I was a high school teacher, and I was hoping to serve some way. But these two girls came to me, and they had their little notebooks. And they came to me with their notebooks, and they asked me in French to teach them Spanish. Well, I was fascinated because they already spoke Creole. They spoke French. They were learning English, and now they wanted to learn Spanish. Well, that's because they wanted to get jobs one day in the Dominican Republic. So I came back to the States with a new desire to learn everything I could about world language education. So I am so passionate <laughs> about this that I even did a research project on it. And I asked lots of volunteers that were local and international about what helps, but what's hard when it comes to serving in host communities. And this is what I learned. People want to match their strengths and their talents with these opportunities to serve. They want to match their strengths and their talents, but they also want a personal, transformative experience. They want it to mean something to them as they are helping others. And that tells me it's about relationships. And the relationships, that is the key to teaching my students. And when I take that back to the classroom, my students understand that they have to learn how to identify a need, and then they have to learn to meet that need. My students <laughs> created an international festival for the students in Haiti. So that trip where I landed in the middle of a political crisis, I had three suitcases full of supplies, and they were not going on the back of a of a motorcycle, even though my friends tried. <laughs> um, so we had triboards and we had banners and activities and puzzles. We had two containers of churros that I had made and uh, several bags of Chinese fortune cookies. And the educators that I was traveling with, one of them brought a green screen. So we placed students in front of the Eiffel Tower. And then we placed students in front of um, the base of Mount Fuji, and those students learned in that moment how to identify and how to look at perspectives of other people in other cultures, and that was children teaching children. Later that afternoon, we were on the rooftop, the tired teachers were, and we were chasing some, some cool breeze, and this boy walks by, and now he had, um, he had crutches, he had had surgery on his leg, but he yelled up at me, and he said, Miss Joanna, I love you so much. And he took those maracas that I had brought with me and he put them in the air and he danced in a circle for me and he said, cha-cha-cha. So I jumped up and I did the same thing. But it's because I said yes to learning French. It was because I said yes to learning Spanish, because I said yes to elementary education and yes to being adventurous and yes to that desire to serve others that I found myself there that day, and that child taught this woman about gratitude. I haven't been able to travel back to Haiti for several years, so I asked my students in my classroom, would they consider a project for the school? And there were some dynamic conversations going on, and then one child interrupted, and he said, wait a minute, why don't we ask them what they need instead of doing what we want now, my teacher heart exploded because I had been waiting on that moment. <laughs> and so I picked up the phone and I called and I found out in that moment that there was a need. There was a need to, teach, to um, provide funding for a summer nutritional program. And while we couldn't travel, my kids said yes. Imagine if we all said yes to those moments. Now, you've heard, you've heard my story and you hear this um, you know, this idea of saying yes. Many years ago when I started traveling, I came across a story about a man named Andrew, and he was a Dutch smuggler of contraband literature, and he would take this contraband literature into, into communist countries at the height of the Cold War, and he, de he describes that moment of decision to help someone else, that moment of humbling yourself as the step of yes. 
And that's what I try to teach my students, to make that step of yes with confidence. My journey, my steps of yes are kind of like the roadblocks. <laughs> there have been moments of concern and alarm and stress. But you see, I, sometimes I have to make that step, that step alone. Sometimes I have to make it. I do get to make it with colleagues, but I am not Latina. I'm not Haitian. I'm not French. I'm not even Canadian French. <laughs> I'm just one person who sometimes has a desire to make a step of yes. So let me leave you with this. Service does not have to be international to be impactful, and it does not have to be meaningful. I mean, it does not have to be <laughs> complicated to be meaningful. And service, you don't have to see an immediate visible effect to actually know that there's a lasting impact. I continue to make a step of yes, and I've thrown a lot of dust in your eyes tonight. I know that, but I hope that when you wipe that dust away, and the next time you are confronted with an opportunity to serve someone, but you don't know what to do, and you don't know what to say, that you will make that step of yes, and you will ask the simple question, what do you need? Thank you.